I'm not going to stop you. Hallelujah. Come on. Woo. I'm talking about somebody that came from somewhere. I'm talking about somebody that's been through some things and brought you to now. Oh, how excellent. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, how excellent. Woo. Come on, how many of you know we're building in 2024? And if we lean on the Holy Spirit, if Jesus does it, it'll be excellent. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, how many of you are glad that God doesn't lower his standard for us? Oh, come on. He's growing us up to be an excellent wife. Hallelujah. It's not lowering his standard. He's bringing us up to it. Oh, how excellent. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Woo. Jesus. Hallelujah. Y'all gonna let me preach this message this morning. Woo! Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you for who you are, oh God. You are the standard of excellence, oh God. You are a perfect Savior, oh God. Thank you for it right now, Lord. I ask you in the name of Jesus, let your excellence stand up inside of me right now in the name of Jesus. Let it be you and none of me, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. I must decrease that you may increase now in Jesus' mighty name. Let every heart, Lord, be soft towards you in this moment, Lord. Let every one of us go up another level in you today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got to get to this word. I got to get to the word. So I'm, I'm going ahead and I'm going to start just by, I'm, I'm, I'm coming out of 1 Peter 2, 1 through 10, and I'm using the NIV version. Amen. 1 Peter 2, 1 through 10. Now, let me give you a little bit of backdrop so we can read with understanding. Amen. This is the time that they were under King Nero, right? He was an evil king, the Bible says. Uh, probably one of the most evils in the Bible, right? Christians at this time were being persecuted, exiled, just for believing in Jesus. Amen? So 1 Peter 2 verse 1 says this, Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Somebody say, grow up. Now that you have tasted, somebody say, tasted, that the Lord is good. Verse 4, as you come to him, the living stone rejected by humans, but chosen, chosen by God as precious to him. Somebody say, precious. You also, like living stones, are being built. Somebody say, built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For the, scriptures, for the scripture says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now you who believe, the stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builder, the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that calls 
people to stumble in rock in a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. Verse 9. Huh. But you are, somebody say, I am. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. Oh, can I say that again? But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Oh, Lord, add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his word. You may be seated. This message today is entitled, Set Apart Living. Set Apart Living. And I was, as I was looking at it this morning, God gave me a subtitle, which will be, I'm built different. I'm built different. Oh, hallelujah. So if you go back to the first one here, uh, the first word that he says in first one is therefore. Amen? So therefore, the pastor said, he sa she says, if you see a therefore, you must find out what? What is therefore? Amen? So therefore reaches back to what, the, what was stated uh, prior to this, uh, the, to what's going to be stated next. Amen? So I'm going to go back to um, chapter 1, and I want to go to back to chapter 1 to verse 13. And it says this, Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children... Do not conform to the evil desires that you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, to be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. I know we live in a day where um, uh, people don't even like to hear the word holy. Some pastors stay away from messages about holiness. Let me help some people because I don't want my young people to start running out of here and saying this message is not for you. I'm telling you it's for you too. Amen. Let me help some people. Holiness just means to be set apart. Amen. It just means to be uh, um, set apart. It means to be come out from the ordinary. Somebody say extraordinary. Oh, my goodness. Sanctification is the process of becoming holy. Come on, is, is, that, is that okay? Sanctif sanctification is the process that God takes us to to get to holiness. Amen. Here's the problem. Holiness looks unreasonable to people who don't understand grace. That's the problem. Because what? Grace is saying, I have died for you to be free. Amen. I paid the price for you to be free. Now watch this. Now I'm giving you the power and the wisdom to live out your freedom. <laughs> so I don't understand if we have been made free, we understand we've been given the power to live out that freedom in Christ. Why do we believe that we have to be in some kind of bondage? Amen. Why, do, why are we saying things like, you got to be going through something? Amen. Why do we be saying stuff like that? Why do we say stuff like, you know, that's, everybody got an issue. If, if that's the case, you are not free. Oh, y'all want to hear me. You are not free in that case. God says, whom the Son set free is what? Free indeed. I don't have to be caught up in some kind of bondage. I'm a saint, not a sinner. Oh, y'all don't, everybody's a sinner. No, no, no. I am not proclaiming that over myself. I am a saint. I am not a sinner. What's the difference? I don't practice sin. I may make mistakes, 
But I'm not practicing any pattern that's going to keep me from holiness. If Jesus doesn't have to repeat his death, you don't have to repeat your sin. The power was released. That's why he said, I'm sending someone for you. Right? Because they were walking with Jesus. They were able to have hope in their change by seeing his life. But when he died, he said, no worries. I'm sending someone. I'm sending the comforter to you. No worries. So whatever Jesus lived, he, whatever Jesus lived, whatever he was capable of doing, he, sent, he put it on the inside of a believer. Oh, man, I'm teaching a little bit. Come on. So, so, so the display of love, the healing power, the, the wisdom Jesus has. Oh, y'all got to get this. He put it on the inside of the believer. I don't have to repeat any pattern of sin in my life. Glory to God. See, what you got to understand and what I'm trying to get you to understand is that the key to change is hope. The key to change is hope. You cannot submit, you cannot listen to that little voice on the inside of you that says you cannot change. I just told you the power is in you. Why? Because if you submit or listen or take heed to that voice on the side of you saying that you can't change, you will never do the work or, the, um, or practice the spiritual disciplines to really be free. That's the problem. So let's look at back at verse, the, 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 the chapter here. Let's look at verse back. At, Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. That sounds unreasonable. How am I supposed to do that, right? That's how that sounds. How am I supposed to do that? But he's saying, I've empowered you to. You can do that. He's not going to tell you to do something, right, without giving you the supply to be able to accomplish it. Then he goes on, he says, like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk. Now, anybody, you know, had some babies, you understand. Once a baby tastes some milk, whoo, they got to have it. They want that milk. Am I right about it? And they cry for it. And nothing more irritating than a baby crying. Everybody want to, hey, let's just hush the baby up. Let's, let's attend to the baby, right? They crying for that milk. What are you crying out for? What are you craving? Oh, come on. So he says here, he says, listen, crave spiritual milk. Why? So that by it you may grow up in your spiritual salvation now that you have tasted the Lord is good. Whoo! Listen, listen to the words he's using. Craving. Taste. What is he dealing with? He's dealing with your appetite. What do you have an appetite for? Oh, come on, somebody. We just came off this 30-day fast, right? Whew. It was a good one. I enjoyed it. I did. I enjoyed it. But I realized some people spent the whole fast thinking about the meal they was going to eat after the fast is over. <laughs> huh? <laughs> but watch. How many of you lost some weight? Good. Glory to God. Oh, God, proud of that. Happy for you for that. Amen? How many of you lost some hate? A little hate came up out. Yeah, I did. Come on now. Be honest with yourself. Glory to God. I did. Amen? Didn't know it was there. Come on. I had to forgive some people in my fast. Oh, come on. Y'all want to go there with me. Amen. So, how many of you have some things some foods that you will never go back to. Mm. How about some people that you will never go back to? Oh, see, y'all, y'all don't want to, y'all, hold on, let me, let, me, let me tell you why. 
Let me tell you why. You may be fasting for a season, but it should change something in your lifestyle. The evidence, oh, come on. Yes, sir. The evidence of being with God is in a changed lifestyle. Not in your hallelujah, not in your amen. <laughs> Y'all not hearing me. <laughs> it's a change. The evidence is a changed lifestyle. What, what, is, what are you never going back to you? Back to. Come on. What, what has changed in you that has eternal value? What has changed in you that heaven can, can celebrate? <laughs> oh, man, I'm preaching kind of good. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm preaching myself. Woo! <laughs> See, fasting is a form, and, 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 and it helps us to, to start learning how to be set apart. Right? You're among everybody, but you're making yourself different. Right? You're among everybody, but you can't eat what everybody's eating. I'm among you. I look like you. I'm among you. We, we, I'm at work. We might have on the same uniform, but I'm not eating the same thing you're eating. I'm not going to be in the same conversations you're in. Uh, so it's teaching us how to be set apart. But if I spend my fast, come on, Pastor said on the prayer line, don't run back to them chips. When we were, when we was, uh, the fast in on Sunday, she said, don't you run back to them chips as soon as you get off this call. Why? Because you got to realize there's a time and a season for everything. Oh, my goodness. See, some of us, we're bowing down in posture. We were here Friday prayer. I don't know if you was here, but oh, my God, God showed up in the Friday prayer. We had the... The hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We had the pads on the floor so people could come and kneel down at the altar before God. I really believe something happened in them when they kneeled down at the altar. Amen. But watch. If they left it there. Oh, come on. If you kneel here at the altar and you don't change any lifestyle, it's only religion. You cannot bow to God in, um, in, in posture but in, and not bow to him in lifestyle. That's only religion. We're more than that. You were built different. Glory to God. Ooh, Jesus. Amen. See, some of us are eating the wrong things at the wrong time, and that spoils your appetite. If you look at Jesus when he was tempted, Amen. So I could I could have called this message after you fast. Amen. I, I could I, I talked about this morning. I said let's let's turn to the book of Pastor DS. Amen. Uh, verse uh, chapter one verse three. Right. Y'all don't have that. It's not out yet. Amen. But in the book of chapter DS, right? Uh, 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 the book of uh, Pastor DS, chapter one verse three says this. Now, after you fast, don't be like the hypocrites. And run back to the old man that used to keep you bound, that used to keep you before away from the holiness of God. Amen? Don't run back. Why? God is dealing with our appetite. So some of us eat the wrong things at the wrong time. And what does that do? It spoils your appetite. Look at Jesus when he was tempted in Matthew 4. Tempted by the devil. You don't have to turn there. I'm just going to uh, uh, talk it out a little bit. Amen? Um, so, but when, when, when you look at that, he was, the Bible says he was tested after he had fasted, 40 days and 40 nights. The devil came and tempted him with what? With bread. He responded to him like, look here, man. Man, uh, uh, man doesn't live off of bread alone, but off of every word that proceeded off the mouth of God. He wouldn't allow the devil to take his focus off the thing of God and put it on his flesh. See, your appetite will steal your focus off of where you're going. That's why you can't fast and contemplate food. I need to change my appetite to desire the things of God, to desire the word, to desire his presence. So you got to understand that. Sometimes it's not the time and it's not the season. 
Amen? Some of you want to date. Maybe it's not the time. Maybe it's not the season. The God, God says, listen, God says, listen, keep yourself until you're married. Why? Because it's not the time and it's not the season. Oh, come on. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Dealing with what? Your appetite. God is expecting us to build an appetite for him. You got to realize this when you talk about looking back and going back. That your worst enemy is your old self. The problem is, is that we're in this new relationship, but we consistently flirt with the old one. Come on, he talks about we're newborn babies. We're in a new relationship, but we want to flirt with the familiar. We're in a new relationship, but we want to flirt with the comfortable. Oh, come on. You, you, you're too comfortable. In what you used to eat, what you used to feed yourself. It's become too habitual for you. Amen? But the Bible says what you have to do is to come out from among them. You gotta come out from the familiar, from the familiar people that take you down that road. I remember a time in my life I had to separate from my brother. Because every time we got together, we had to smoke a blunt. That was our connection. Let's smoke a blunt. That, that's, that's the only time we really got together. I needed to change that relationship. And so in order to do that, I had to say, bro, I'm not smoking no more. I'm set apart. Yeah. Hey, Amen. It was uncomfortable to say, but I had to do it. Let me help. Somebody help me this morning. Now, you don't have to if you don't want to. But I'm going to ask somebody to come and help me. Come on, come on up. Glory to God, I like that. I like that. See, some of y'all were looking at me like, please, Pastor DS, come on up here. Huh? Okay, no worries. Good, good, good. No worries. But listen, some of y'all looking at me, oh, Pastor DS, hope you don't call on me. Oh, Lord. But y'all heard this statement before that you can't fly with the eagles and live among the chickens. <laughs> Go, I had to mess with you with that. Amen. But you are comfortable in that season. Yeah. You look comfortable. You chilling out. You good, right? Right? But you had to leave that comfortability to bring value to my message. Oh, y'all getting that? See, I heard Ty Trippett say this. And some of y'all know he, he, sing, he sing, does music, but he can preach. He can preach. I heard him say that to come up or to move forward, you must position yourself out of something else. There must be a departure from something. Amen? So you left your comfortability, and now God used you to bring value to the people. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Woo! Woo! Glory to God. You can sit back down. Thank you so much. So watch. Jesus left heaven in order to be king. Before coming to earth, he wasn't king. He was God, but he wasn't king. He left comfortability. Oh, he left people worshiping and praising him and saying he was great. He came out of comfortability into discomfort so that he can be crowned king. Are you willing? Are you willing to come out of, from among them, come out of those comfortable places and allow God to use you? Hallelujah. Let's read on. As you come to him, verse 4, I'm sorry, verse 4, in 1 Peter 2, verse 4. As you come to him, the living stone rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him. Oh, I'm valuable. Somebody say, I'm valuable. This is the Bible that said this. This is not the book of Pastor D.S. This is actually 1 Peter, amen, in the, in the uh, NIV version that says, you are precious to him. Oh, man, am I at Christ the King Church this morning? Listen, you are too valuable to be tried out. You're precious to him. Oh, come on. Listen, I may be different, but I'm valuable because I'm precious to him. 
actually, watch this, because I'm different, it makes me valuable. Because I'm precious to him. Oh, goodness gracious. Woo, come on, where am I at? Is this Rabbit Hill Road? Is this Christ the King? I'm pr- I said I'm, I'm, I'm valuable. Hallelujah. How valuable are you? However valuable Jesus' death was. That's how valuable you are. Priceless. That's why your job can't pay you what you're worth. Amen. That's why you're on assignment at your job. Quit going there just to make money. Your assignment makes you valuable. Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So this is, this is, listen, this is, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be whole, a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You are being built. So listen, if you go back to verse 1, verse 1, in, uh, verse one through 3, it's talking about you as a baby. He switched it now. He's talking about you as somebody that can be built. Amen. That, that, you, that somebody that is um, uh, now able to go through a little more, right, to be challenged a little more because he's molding you into something. Amen. Come on. He's, he's, now you're at a place as a mature Christian. You're, you're maturing in Christ. You're at a place that you can take a little more bumps and bruises so that he can shape you into what he's called you to be. I heard this analogy that somebody, I don't know if it's true, because it's one of those preacher's analogies, and you can't always trust them because they're good at coming up with stories, amen? <laughs> so it's one of those analogies where the guy said he was on the ground chiseling and, and, and breaking this rock and chilling in this rock, and he said somebody came and asked him, he said, said man, what are you doing? Are you doing all of that? He said, because this rock that's down here has to be able to fit up there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, somebody sleep on me this morning. He said that this rock down here, this precious stone down here has to be able to fit in up there. God is shaping you, chiseling you, molding you so you can fit in up there. Whoo, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But how many of you don't know we don't just live just to fit into heaven? We don't live just to fit into heaven. On earth like it is in heaven. It's a job of work we must do while we're in the earth. Hallelujah. So God is maturing you. Amen. He's maturing us. So in maturity, amen, you got to realize, and even if you look at Hebrews 1 and 3, and I want to mention that because that's our scripture for the year as it talks about moving on to maturity. Amen? It says, and I'm just going to read it real quick. We have much to say about this. And I'm, I'm starting, I'm starting, I'm starting from 511. We have this, much to say about this, but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact, Though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need to be taught. You, uh, you, you the elementary truth of God's word all over again. Oh, man, he's fussing at you. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk being still an infant is not adequate with the teachings about righteousness. How many of you know it says, he who... He who Thirst after righteousness shall be filled. The problem we have is we lust for happiness. Too many of us lust for happiness. This younger generation, they just lust for happiness. That's why they say things like, just do what makes you happy. As long as it makes you feel good, go on and do it. Does he make you happy? Does she make you happy? But you don't look at this. They bring me to purpose. Yeah, they're not looking at this. They, they keep me from holiness. I'm set apart person. The problem with happiness is the needle keeps moving once you reach it. So you run after it, it runs. You chase, 
it runs. You chase, it runs. Because it's too temporary to really satisfy you. But he said, those who thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Only God can really satisfy the real hunger of a heart of a person. Oh, my goodness. But Silas food is for the mature. Somebody say, I'm going on to maturity. Who by consent use, use have traveled themselves to distinguish good from evil. Verse 1, um, chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity. Come on, we got to go forward to maturity. We got to go forward to It's a decision. It's a decision. Maturity is not an age. It's a level that you decide to fight to get to. I ask my children sometimes when they are acting immature and I feel like they're too old to be doing what they're doing, and I'll say to them, what time you going to grow up, man? You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't say you need to grow up. Are you growing up? Bro, you behind. What time? Come on, can I get the five minutes? I need you to grow up. That's what he's saying here. That's what he's saying here. Let's come up. What did he say, Pastor? Let's get on with it. Glory to God. So what does maturity say? Number one, maturity says you've got to realize you're an unfinished work. The person sitting next to you is an unfinished work. Right? You can't, you, you, you gotta be, you gotta understand that. But you can never be comfortable or be satisfied with, uh, with not allowing the Holy Spirit to do the work in you. Amen. You must understand that to be truly healthy, it takes nutrients and activity. Be hearers of the word and doers of the word. You have to apply it to your life. You hear this word today, you're responsible to apply it to your life. Once you hear the truth, once you receive revelation, at that point, God himself is holding you to living that out. Glory to God. Mature Christians pursue holiness. It's desire. It's not duty. It's desire. You got to pursue holiness. You got a desire to mature. Mature Christians take an honest look at themselves. How often do you look at yourself? Are you up to date on your repentance? How often do you look at yourself? Amen. You got to be able to say stuff like, I can't go to your Super Bowl party this year because it's just too much beer there, too much alcohol, and I'm not strong enough. Yeah, come on. I'm being set apart. I don't mean to mess with your Super Bowl party, but I'm sorry. I'm being set apart. Come on. So somebody need to say, listen. I can't date you at night anymore. We're going to have to do lunch day because I know I'm weak at nighttime. I know that's a pattern for me, and I can't keep going down the same patterns that keep me from holiness. Come meet me at my lunch. If you can't, then I know you're not the one. Come on. Somebody say, I will not be controlled by my appetite. Hallelujah. Let's go on into maturity. See, the world, they understand stuff like that. They understand how you how you gonna tell him that he gotta date you in the in the afternoon. You know what I'm saying? You know he worked, blah, blah. If he really wants you, he'll make a way. Because the world understands this kind of stuff, right? They understand, they don't, they got, they're not gonna understand you can't come to the super, but they're gonna say, bro, bro, you always bring the chicken wings. Well, won't be none chicken wings this year, bro. I'm sorry. Amen. Come on. The world understands that um, when somebody strikes you, somebody do you wrong, you got to bite back. Only snakes bite back. Are you a snake? You don't have to bite back. The Bible says, look, that we should what? Turn the other cheek. Now, let me help you with that. Because turn the other cheek isn't saying that uh, you should just let somebody pound on you. No, that's not what that's saying. What is it saying? It's saying turn to the side of you that has not been hurt. 
Oh, come on. Respond with the side of you that has not been, that has not been through something. Resp uh, respond with the side of you that has not been victimized. That's what that's saying. In other words, there's another side of you. There's a, a power on the inside of you that says you don't have to fall victim to your flesh. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Do you desire to be set apart? Do you desire holiness? I'm not saying you're there, but when you desire it, come on, because your appetite will tell you what your focus is. If I desire it and I grow an appetite for the things of God, I automatically start moving towards it in my daily life. Jesus, oh, my time. I'm going to give you five ways to live a set-apart life, and then I'm done. Hallelujah. Number one, embrace the fact that you do not fit in. You have to have the courage to be disliked. Be strong and of good courage. you got to have the courage to be disliked. Oh, can I talk to my young, some of my young people here? You have to have the cut. See, once you get so uh, older, you don't care no more. <laughs> you don't care. Like what? You know, I'm a, I said what I said. Amen? But when you're young, it's a little more difficult. You got to have the courage to be disliked. I don't care if you don't like me more than I care about what God thinks of me. Number two, remind yourself what God says about you and say it out loud. Look what he says. He says, verse 9, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, now you have received mercy. Let me say something to you. Now that you know who you are, holiness demands that you live like it. You are royal priesthood. Royal. Stop acting like a peasant. Your royal priesthood. Come on. There's a way you should walk. There's a way you should talk. Come on. Your kings and priests and queens in here. There's a way you should operate. There's a way you should talk to people. Come on. Royalty is, is judged by the state. A king is judged by the state of its people. How do you treat your people? How do you help the people around you grow? Number three. Live a fasted lifestyle. Live a fasted lifestyle. Well, what does that mean, Pastor? Number one, record, be, this is to be honest with yourself, recognize the things or the patterns that keep you from holiness. Sometimes it's not necessarily sin. Sometimes it can be too much football. Sometimes it can be too much shopping. Recognize, break the pattern. Don't let the devil find you in the same place as he found you before. Don't you know algorithms in the computer are not a new thing? The devil been watching your algorithms. He's been watching what you've been doing and tempting you with it. Number four, watch what you eat. Let me go back to number three. I'm sorry. Live a fasted lifestyle. Listen to what Pastor Diaz did. Once a month, at least once a month, I'm going to fast. Right? Why? Because fasting shows that there's a strength in me, right, that I didn't know I had. And number two, it shows me that I can depend on God's strength to get me through. Amen? Hope. Hope is the key to change. Oh, come on. So I, that's why I live a fasted Lifestyle. You should live a fast. Choose what that is for yourself. Choose what that is. Maybe it's not from food. Maybe you fast every now and again from this or that, shopping or whatever it may be. But live a fasted lifestyle. Now, 
I'm going to say this. The only biblical fast is from food. There's nothing else in the Bible but from food. So let me just say that. All right. Number two, watch what you eat. Amen. How many of you know the saying? They say you are what you eat. If you consume something too much, it starts to take over your thought process, your precepts, and your concepts. Amen. So you have to watch. You have to, you have to watch things to feed your things conducive to who God says you are. Amen. Number five, seek accountability. Amen. Look at look at look for someone to hold you accountable to holiness. That mean that may means it can't be your homeboy or your homegirl. It has to be somebody who's not afraid of you. Come on, it has to be somebody that's just not trying to be cool with you or get something from you. But it has to be somebody that holds a standard in their own life. And they want to see better in you. And they want to see you live holy. Stop running from those people. Stop running from those people. Those are the people who God, come on, we are, we are a royal piece of the holy people. We need each other. We was built for a community. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Let's stop right there. Father, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah to your holy name. Thank you, Father, Lord. Thank you for ministering to us this morning, Lord. Sing, thank you for seeing us this morning, Lord, as your people, oh God. Royal people, royal priesthood this morning, Lord. Precious in your sight. Thank you. That's why you speak to us, Lord. That's why you've given us your word. That's why, Lord God, you're taking us to new places and you decided to do the work to build us, Lord God, into a spiritual, strong spiritual house. Lord God, let every person here, Lord, under the sound of my voice, every person even at home, Lord God, go up another level in you, Lord God. Be surrendered at another level in the name of Jesus, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.